Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. There's a little more of a background concoction due to me recording this at six minutes past two in the afternoon. (sighs) So it just means uh, Andre's going to be running around. I've got the windows open because it's kind of like a summer day. I'm not sure what day it is. I think it's the uh, I don't know. Twelfth or thirteenth today? I think it's the thirteenth today of May. So it's Monday. And It's the first summery day we've had for a while. Well, I don't know. Probably really since the beginning of May. It's it's been a little bit chilly, been raining. But it's like proper blue skies. And from the looks of things... It's a nice day. Andre's just running around, just looking his bowl to see if he's got any dinner there. It's like he's only had his breakfast a few hours ago. He literally had his breakfast about nine o'clock this morning. It's two o'clock now. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Oh, great. So now he's decided to make love to his girlfriend. While I'm making this recording. I want to give you a visual. I'm not going to be graphic. I'll just give you the visual of what he's doing. Oh, that's right. He's gone to a different he's basically got lots of different girlfriends the bottom half of their body or the body rather and he's got one (laughs) he's got (laughs) one head and I realise that could sound a little bit like a serial killer or something but he hasn't got a head in the fridge or something anything like that it's he's got a slipper an old slipper of mine and that's the head of his girlfriend and he bites onto that and it's it's just that's just what he does and then he finds something soft to uh, be romantic with I'm going to use that that term it can be a crunched up carrier bag it can be anything yeah a towel is he's got a towel that he likes a favourite one that I'm never going to be able to use again there's he's got a little (laughs) a little blue teddy bear that he likes to use as well Um, I've got some bedding that he uses that uh, I don't know why I must have just put it down for him to sleep on it's actually my bedding which needs to be washed 
and I, I think he's yeah I think he's ruined it and I've also he's got a there's an old package I got from Amazon the you know the outer wrapping package he uses that so I'm scared to go near that um he's got a big snake that he occasionally he does everything with because it's so long he can bite it and so yeah I think that's part I think it's, yeah he does that what else oh there's carrier bags in the kitchen I don't have as many as I did but or for him but he has a, a few carrier bags that are on the kitchen floor just behind the freezer or rather between the freezer where the radio is and the washing machine and he crumples them up and then you know he's uh, shares his passion is one way of describing it another thing that he does is he also uses my dirt <laughs> my dirty laundry so I've got a pile of clothes it's not a big pile of clothes sometimes it's a big pile of clothes but it's not that big and it's on the floor and it's where I chuck me dirty laundry you know whatever I've got I chuck it over there on the floor it's out of the way I don't just chuck it on the floor in the middle of the room of the bedroom you know it's, it's got it's own little place and it hasn't got a sign above it with a little arrow down saying smelly dirty old clothes because that would be rude I do feel it's not their fault that they're smelly and old just like it's not my fault that I'm smelly and old I can't help it it's all part of being old and smelly I don't know so Andre I also I when I go to bed I it's one of the things that I look forward to and I do talk about it sometimes I look forward to sitting down on my bed and taking off my socks. One one at a time. And then what I do is, because normally I've talked about it, the experience and shared that with you. And it, the focus has really been upon the unveiling of the feet and the enjoyment of that particular process or more the end result really the end result being my feet and my toes being in the air just free I mean, do you remember that film uh, about those lions and I think it was in the 70s the 1970s that is not the 1870s because what I'm going to talk about was a film in the 1870s I don't think that there was any such thing as a film back then but then I'm not sure when when did the moving pictures <laughs> the moving pictures when did they begin I don't know I'm not sure I mean Harold Lloyd he was a long time ago I 
I don't know which one I like the most, like Buster Keaton. I'm sure there's one that was also good, but he wasn't as well known. I have to look this up on Google because I don't remember. So Buster Keaton. Oh, there was someone that was quite un, not as well known, but he did. You know, you should watch his films if you Google him because you've probably never heard of him. Um, but he's very visual. I don't think. No, he, I was gonna say I'm not sure if he made any uh, films with talking I'm just going to have a little bit of water that's me with the lid I'm playing with the lid the lid's already off <laughs> it's just, I thought you'd be I thought you'd say nice bit of uh, yeah visuals for you I'm now going to put the lid actually on I am Oh, it's quite difficult. The bottle's a little bit like my uh, my conversations. Difficult to get the thread. Do you like that? Yeah. Very clever. So who's the person? Oh, yeah, the person... Because you had Harold Lloyd. Buster Keaton. Oh, there's this other one. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, what's his name? Billy, not Billy Borstal. I was going to say Alfred Adler, but that's a, a psychotherapist. Adler, oh, he's good. He's, um, what did he, what did he focus on? Adler. Is it children? I'm not sure. I forget. I have to re-emerge myself. I used to have loads of books on Alfred Adler. I can't believe I've forgotten. <laughs> it was part of a training course, hypnosis course actually, psychotherapy course I was doing. And I always, I say always, because you know, nothing's always, is it? Or I have always. I mean, there was a time when I didn't. So, but yeah, it's like I kind of have a tendency, or have had tendencies, that when I'm studying a subject, I go all out and buy lots of books on the subject. <clears throat> now, I haven't done that for a while because of my small library now compared to what I used to have I used to have a well for me I classed it as a brilliant library of books that I'd uh, amassed since 1997 because I lost all my books up to that point or 96 but yeah I pretty didn't get much books between 96 and 97 and then 1997 I probably only had a handful of books and I decided to build up my collection so I did what I am also going to do on Wednesday when I get paid is it Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday I'm going to go to the bookshop and I'm going to buy a self-help book. Or not so much, but like a motivational book. And that's why I'm going to start doing reading more of those kinds of books. And uh, help, start feeding my brain with a bit more better stuff, you know. And I've read lots and lots over the years. 
I hope that some of it comes out when I talk. Um, I also had a big, big. I wonder if I say something, some of it comes out. What if I wrote, read loads and loads of cookbooks? I'd just be talking about scones and measurements of sugar and flour and how many eggs and how many egg egg whites go into that particular recipe and what temperature and how the temperatures change depending on what kind of a cake you're cooking and sometimes the longer it needs to be in to lower the temperature is otherwise it cooks on the outside but not on the inside and we'll be talking about different types of pans to use so that the particular cake in question doesn't stick to that said pan or tray yeah I used to, used to do baking at school well not baking cake it wasn't just cakes it was food as well yeah in some ways it was the worst day of the week for me because for some my parents were incredibly lazy sometimes they used to say whatever I cooked on Thursday or whatever day it was that's what the family was going to have to eat that evening oh I mean, it's bad enough for the rest of my family. I felt sorry for them. I really did. It's like just their hearts sunk when they saw what I'd brought home. So it's bad enough for them. It's worse for me because I knew what was in it. You know. I knew what ingredients were on in there and sometimes it would just be cakes so we'd be able to have like a proper food cooked for us at home or maybe that was a good day for a buffet and we'd have sandwiches uh, which was I didn't mind if it quite like cheesy puffs and cheesy fingers don't look like the flaky fingers I used to make them at school as well and I quite like I mean it wasn't called a buffet at that time but a buffet it was because it was a, a mixture of things to choose from but not at the scale of a wedding because when you got I don't know how many people did we have we had the big bloke we had the woman and we had the oldest kid the second oldest kid me and then the little one so what was that six of us So that was wasn't big enough for a wedding buffet. I don't know. Wouldn't it be lovely if food just kept its freshness and there was always food, always just you know you're walking down the street and you're thinking you know what really do with a sausage roll dipped in salsa or uh, maybe tomato sauce or something and then you just reach your hand out and near the table you know you look over and say oh sausage rolls and then you get a choice of other things that you may also like 
It'd be like, you know, Amazon or some other shop, you know, when you buy something. Would you like this as well? Before you go to checkout, would you like this? Would you like this? You've got to go for about seven different things. So no, 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 no. You know, do you want, would you like batteries? Of course I'd like batteries. I mean, how else am I going to use it? Okay, I'll have it. But you know, generally, it's like, nye, nye, nye. It, which gets a little bit, but it's okay if it's food and it's free. That's different, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah. Moon pig do that. Yeah, moon pig, they sell cards. This isn't an advert for them, but I have used them. And they're good. They do exactly what they say they're going to do. And. I do kind of wish that. Uh, so I want to be in business. I want to make lots of money now. But for fun. But I like the idea. I want to be an anthropologist. I want to make billions, but I want to... So I want to make billions of dollars, or pounds really. But, you, you know, I mean, it'd still be dollars. Uh, unless it was one billion dollars, because then that's about... I don't know, this, that's, that's not a billion pounds. So I want to make at least a billion pounds. So I reckon 20, 30, 50 billion, that would be livable. I could live on that. And then be an anthropologist. So I'd have like maybe 50 million in a bank, which fully means I probably haven't, it'd be going up by probably 10, 15 million a year. Or a billion a year, rather. And then I'd go around and I'd maybe share 10,000 dollars a year. So I'd be an anthropologist and I'd I'd help people and I'd perhaps have 10 people a year that I help. And I help help them to start a new business by giving them a thousand dollars each. When you think all those people's lives I could change. I was sitting there in my castle of gold. Because I would, I would, I'd convert everything to gold. Everything would be converted. Apart from in the safe big safe I'd have gold bullion but I'd turn that into wood but everything else would be gold so the gold bullion would be wood everything else would be gold apart from apart from the toothbrush because gold bristles if not I'm not worried about the hardness I just oh my teeth go weird thinking about it Ugh. It's not going to go well with me fillings. Charlie Chaplin, that's the one. He's quite unknown. You might not have heard of him. If you um, goggle, 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 goggle it, it, and you can have a check. He so it's, it's I, don't, I don't normally go into like. I don't go into polix, poli, polix? politics very often. I try not to, you know, because although it can be incredibly boring for those of those that us that get bored by it. Um, another, well, another person, well, basically Hitler. At this, he's a, a bloke from the war. That's the Second World War. Um, 
because people talk about the war as if we were supposed to know there's been more than one war and actually a world war to someone you know in another country that's going through something it's the same for them as it is a world war it makes no difference if the rest of the world are fighting they got bombs being dropped on their schools you know I wonder what kind of a country would do that drop bombs on schools and hospitals barbaric countries wouldn't it yeah anyway Hitler saw Charlie Chaplin and thought now I like that beard and he copied his beard and his politics because originally Hitler was really into like comedy and stuff but got talking to Charlie Chaplin and he thought you're right we do need to do something about that there's it something in Charlie Chaplin he worked in Hollywood and he was going on about I don't know he was just you know being a a little bit verbal a little bit judgmental a little bit pointy you know pointing pointing his fingers a little bit they've got this and we've got that it's like yeah jealousy mate jealousy you know work hard work hard and you'll get what you want in life work hard believe never give up that's that's the thing as, as Gabriel Peter Gabriel once said sledgehammer so it's he was he had this stick like a walking stick and a bowler hat I don't know why it's called a bowler hat because I've been to a bowling place hall is it they call it a bowling hall where people go bowling and they they chuck the ball towards stittles and stittles skittles skitt skittles taste the rainbow it says skittles stittles stencils but basically they're these things that stand up and they're shaped like a, a bit like an alien like E.T. or a very very slim person yeah oh no wait a minute no, a nice curvy but very much bottom heavy curviness and the little head on top. It's not really a head, but it is it is a head but it's not a head. It's not a human, you know, not or even an albatross doesn't not that kind of head or a fish or a bear I was going to say or an umbrella over there because it rhymed you see that wouldn't have fitted in with what I was saying sometimes I like to rhyme things it's uh, it's like a hobby but something that I don't enjoy doing it's, you know does that make sense it's, I don't get any enjoyment out of it which is why I don't do it but other than that it's just like a hobby I used to like watching is it a key co key key stone cops I think if I recollect correctly, the key, key, 
key stone is it key keystone cops used to be full on action proper like from the beginning to the end uh, chasing each other in cars and chasing each other out of cars and really really kind of and I think there might have been some music at the same time but that might have been someone else in the house just having to be playing music when it was on telly I can't remember no I still quite like watching it but Harold Lloyd was Harold Lloyd was one of my favourites but it was someone else maybe it is Buster Keaton Uh, Buster Keaton we no he was there was someone else I just can't remember the name you may be thinking Jim Carrey but no that's that was a few months before Jim Carrey Fallen asleep. should be getting my soundproof foam wall things a hundred and twenty should be arriving soon Andre's just run out of his bag done a little sneeze and he's now lying on his back sneezing again and He's gone back to his bowl, looking at me. Now he's about to climb up on me to say, why is my, why is there no food in the bowl, Daddy? Now he's sniffing my groin. Is it wrong that it feels nice? <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. He's... Hey, hello, boy. Now he's licking my hand. He likes to lick that bit in between the finger and the thumb, you know, a little bit of skin. The bit that's webbed for some people. Hello, honey pummy. Hello, smelly belly. Hello, pooey Huey. How you doing? Are you alright? 
He's got his little tongue out. He's happy. Are you happy? Yes, you are. And you deserve... You. It's right that you should be happy. Because you're the luckiest boy in the world. Not only have you got the best daddy in the world. But you are the most beautiful little boy in the whole wide world as well. Yes, you are. You're the cutest, cutest little ferret ever. You are absolutely beautiful. Yes, you are. You don't realise, do you, how beautiful you are. And you've even got a cute little sneeze. Even though I wish you wouldn't do it in my face. But we'll talk about that later. When we don't have to be nice to each other. The cutest little boy. Yes, you is. You easy, wizzy, wizzy. You easy, wizzy, wizzy. Yes, you easy, busy to pity. So I'm giving a little bit of cuddle, a little bit of a stroke, and he's happy just lying on my belly. Oh, well, he was, but he's not now. He's. I think he got embarrassed, so don't tell people that I'm doing that. And that bit about me sniffing your groin, now that was inappropriate. Like, look, okay, blimey. <laughs> Is it wrong that I don't care that I'm inappropriate? <laughs> Is that bad? I genuinely don't, genuinely do not care. Because everyone's got their own idea about what's appropriate. I happen to have no barriers. <laughs> I have no, no, no lines, no picket lines. No lines I shall not cross. Very ultimate, all freedom for me. I'm quite lucky I can do and say whatever I want. And some might be say, well, no, otherwise you'd be, if you just didn't said everything you want, you'd be in prison, wouldn't you? I thought, no, because I don't want to do anything that would put, put me in prison. I say and do what I want to say. I don't want to be horrible to people or do nasty things. If you could just do what you want, you just help yourself to to stuff in shops and just walk out. The shops wouldn't pay would you? No, I actually do want to pay. <laughs> it's a weird thing, but I actually do want to pay money for things that I purchased in a shop. I don't want to walk out without paying. Not any part of me wants to do that. Uh, 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 that I think that struggle, that can be a struggle for some people. What do you mean you want to pay? That's not that's not normal. No, I think it is. I think it's uh, to want to walk out and not pay. That's probably the less the less normal version, potentially. The idea is of well, we can't do what we want, can we? Otherwise, we get in trouble. No, no, I do what I want. I don't get in trouble. Never been arrested. Never been cautioned by the police. Because I use different names. <laughs> I just I give a false name. No, I don't. Never been cautioned or arrested or anything. And I'm not talking out of prideness. Oh, look at me. I've never been arrested. Because that's kind of the norm. Most people have never been arrested. You know, it's... There's a lot of people that have been arrested lots of times... But there's more people that have never been arrested, ever. (laughs) 
it's just not my thing. I'm not really into it. Yeah. Arrested, arrestation, arrestation, whatever. Arrestation is not my thing. I like eating cake and mixing it with ice cream. Now you may say, but hey, Juicy JJ, why have just why have you just brought that up now? Why have you waited so long to tell us this useful and wildly exciting information about pudding? And my answer to that is never really thought about it as being particularly riveting. But that's okay. Some of the food I brought home from school. Oh. I was just oh, yeah. Oh, it was. <laughs> it wasn't so good. It really wasn't. What's weird though is, see, my dad has never mentioned. Pretty much for the yeah. As an adult, he's never mentioned anything that I've done, that I did at school, or I did it, you know, during growing up. Not at school, because I didn't. He wasn't at school with me. He wasn't hiding in me, in me bag, taking notes. He, uh, but, you know, he was there, like, living in the house I lived in but as an adult he's never mentioned anything about me as a kid I'm pretty sure he's just forgotten forgotten you know apart from one thing this was a few years ago. Well, it's not that long ago. But a while ago, a while. Maybe last year. And I was having a conversation with someone. I must, uh, yeah. I think it was at my dad's and then we said... They say, he said, remember when you used to, we used to have to eat your food that you cooked. You know, we're going back 35 years. But he still re- he still remembers it. He's been married about seventeen times since, and uh, had most of the parts of his body replaced with robotics. He's you know he had uh, as part of a test program to create astronauts that could travel to Mars without a spaceship so you know he's gradually they've been turned them into a I don't want to say the word because it's I don't want to sound prejudiced but a robot 
I said it, he's a robot. And sometimes my socks, I put them on the floor and they're in a ball because I put them inside each other. And I'm probably uses those as well. And he said, my dad said, oh, you've got this, this thing, he used to come home with a lasagna. And apparently, because I'd be at home, I'd have cling film over it, maybe tin foil. And occasionally, if the bowl was hot, I would hire a dwarf or little person, mini me, I'm, I'm not sure what the correct term is, um, I'm trying to be respectful so I don't know, and uh, I used to have one of them. <laughs> As a, a bought to me as a joke, and I used to carry him around, and he used to blow on the on the food to cool it down for me, and in return I'd give him crumbs to eat. Sometimes I'd sing him a song, like Michael Jackson for some reason. Heal the world. He liked that. And my dad said, oh, didn't like that. I said, what was wrong with him? And my dad said, no no there's nothing wrong with him the problem was and they went for it basically I would have the bowl pushed towards my chest as I was walking home uh, it didn't live that long away you know it wasn't I was walking but it didn't take me five hours it was half an hour 20 minutes said the thing is that by the time I got home half of the contents of that bowl would be all over me so what my mum did instead of getting a bowl she just lay me on the table and the family would just eat off of my shirt while I was still in it or my jumper or whatever you know never been great at cooking rice so I bought a Weight Watchers well it's a similar kind of thing some kind of reduced weight food and 
it was a tikka masala thing. I thought, you know what? Forgotten what I was talking about. I literally fell asleep. struggling to stay awake so I'm going to end this recording